This is your boy Dre, Full Effect. We are live, having a good time. Today, we have Emily Stewart here. We're going to do her Stewart Cinema and Cafe industry news. She came with the banner today, so she's coming up. She got a lot of ah. stuff to discuss. So, we, you know, so it's, it's going to be interesting. We're going to work ourselves through this. We're not going to do the DJ because everybody's getting locked down in their house today. Shout out to DJ Elite, DJ Bango, and DJ Mark, who all been locked down by their jobs. Really? They can't come out the house. Oh, my god! I think it's their wives, though, but still, I'm oh. not going to call them out. <laughs> or I just did. <laughs> no, yeah. but uh, they all of them have to be in the house. Okay. And that, they wanted to be here, but... You know, it's better safe than sorry and stuff. So they'll be on the live, which they already are. So not the live, but on the website. And please go to www.dreshouse.com. That's oh, where there I'm you going, go. right now. That's where you at? I'm going there now. All right. I thought you said you was there, but okay. It's all good. And, we, and you know, like every time we have Emily Stewart here, we always have a good time. She always puts out a lot of good information. So please don't leave. Tell a friend, scream, everybody. Say, Emily Stewart is live on Dre's house. And we are going to have some fun tonight, are we? Yes. You got a lot of information? Yes. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. So she Ooh. definitely got to put some information out today and see how a power woman like herself can How make... I'm surviving the storm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a storm, all right, Ooh. even from this morning. Oh my gosh. But she's making it happen, you know. She's working with everybody who does work with anything with her. So she could have she could have been that person, but she's making sure everybody's happy. Now, am I the only one bugging? Or are you bugging out on a candle? Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be like a relaxing scent. Because it's like about to put me to sleep. I, I know, feel like right? I'm chilling. <laughs> then it's not me. And then it's nice and warm in here. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's like a little a toasty. Yeah, it's like a cocoon. <laughs> There you go. So, as I say, we're going to, oh, before we even get going, we got to pay some bills. You know what I'm saying? Pay them quickly. Pay, okay. <laughs> Believe me, we got time with no DJ. We have a lot of time. So, real quick, shout out to Abraham, Kevin Spann, and Sons, Allstate Insurance. You in good hands. Isn't his birthday, like, coming up? I was trying to get to that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. You with me now? Yep. Okay. Okay, his birthday just passed, and yeah. also his sister-in-law's birthday, they did a big party this weekend as well. Okay. And also his son, Trey, who came down from prep school, his birthday as well. Mm -hmm. So happy birthday to the certain twins, Kevin Spann and his outstanding son, Trey. So again, Abraham, Kevin Spann, and Sons All State Insurance, make sure you give him a call. You can look him up on Facebook at any time, Kevin Spann. Go to the YouTube channel that he's working that he's working on. There's a lot of good information on there. A lot of people are, are liking it and checking it out. Good insurance information. Go to YouTube, Kevin. I the, have to call him. <laughs> Where'd you get water from? I brought it from home. Oh, okay. I came prepared. Oh, right, my bad. Kevin, the insurance guru Spann, make sure you go on, on on uh, YouTube and check that out. Download his free app, A-K-S-P-A-N-N, -N, and also email him, Kevin Spann at allstate.com. The dude is a beast, whatever he does. Everybody loves Kevin. Kevin is always about the community, so make sure y'all check that out. Also, our guest, Stuart Cinnamon Cafe. Make sure y'all check that out. Uh, they, they're closed for the movies, but the cafe is still open. You can go there at mm -hmm. lunchtime. And she was extremely busy today because she didn't yes. really talk to me that much today. <laughs> so she was extremely busy. A lot of people, there's a lot of people that does a lot of movies over there. It's always crowded. So they're coming in there. And today was Empanada Tuesday. That's right. So, I meant to bring you an empanada. I know, but it was gone, right? Next time I got you. <sighs> well, Next time I'll bring some chicken empanada. There we go. We're you talking. Like the beef and cheese? Nah, chicken. Chicken. All yeah. right. You have some spicy How'd chicken empanada. I guess empanada. that you would like the chicken empanada. Okay, that sounds kind of <laughs> racist there, but okay. <laughs> we'll work on that, you know. But uh, definitely check our theater out. Well, check the cafe out now at 79 West Street, Greenpoint, Brooklyn, 11222. It's a great location. And once we get all this stuff that's happening right now up and coming, she always has the latest movies that's out. So please go to the website, StuartCinema.com, right? Yes, StuartCinema.com. There we go. And just check her out. Or you can email her at emlyn at stewartcinema.com. So make sure y'all check her out. She does so much. Also, um, Lycan Media, we just did a great event. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But we just got finished doing a great event. 
Emily, you should have been there, but it, yes, you know, but I wanted to. Yeah, Kevin Spent, KP, mm -hmm. and his lovely wife Nene came out. We filmed, we took pictures. We always work as a team. We did an outstanding job. I put some of the pictures up. If and you I, may say so yourself. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. You saw, you saw the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> you saw they the, did. They did. They look beautiful. Oh, yeah. It was an outstanding event. Yeah. So shout out to KP. If you want to contact him, hit him up at lycan.black.media or dot digital. Dot digital. Lycan.black at digital.com. It'll be in the notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or hit me up, Dre's House 2014 at gmail.com. I'll make sure you get in contact with him. I, first time I tried to do it without reading something, so I'm, I'm always on point on that, but I slipped. But uh, definitely check him out. A lot of stuff that he's doing as well. You know, as I said, things slow down, but people are still reaching out to him, but he ain't trying mm -hmm. to, he's not trying to leave the house either. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you know, like he has the day job thing going, but as yeah. it's, 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 soon as this stuff is over, he's going to get hit pretty hard. Mm. You know, you know how that is and stuff with yeah. all the stuff that's going to happen. You're going to be busy as soon as this, everything is lifted, everybody's comfortable. Uh, if, you know, I would suggest people go to Stuart Cinnamon Cafe and book your event. This stuff should be over before the summer. I will see. But I, if, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking we're hoping to be open in like three weeks. Yeah. Max. So definitely. Okay. Uh, DJ Mark said he's drinking Corona water. <laughs> this dude. But definitely, uh, I definitely want to get that out. And also, I want to say congratulations to the ladies of Sky. Not necessarily the ladies of Sky, to the whole group Sky, mm -hmm. where they actually had their unsung Sunday night of TV I One private it. viewers. It was great. It was great. It's a lot of good information mm -hmm. up there. Uh, as you know, with the ladies, there's not a lot of drama and everything. It's just all about fun doing everything correctly uh the music was correct and everything so if y'all saw it it was off the hook if you missed it please go to your on demand and watch that it was such a great thing and what i loved about it is watching the ladies cry being so emotional about it because that was the first time they you saw you like it. to watch ladies cry i mean prince like when dubs cry why can't i make ladies cry i'm not make oh, them or watch them no but it was, it was a lot of uh positive information not positive information but positive situations that was going on mm -hmm. at the venue uh that was the first time they didn't want to watch it until it actually shown i felt like i went to school because i got so much information i didn't know and it's so much more yeah, to know yeah, and stuff. Yeah. but i'm glad that they hit that because with the change in the time of music and everything mm -hmm. it was like how they survived and it was outstanding people that was working with them yeah. uh and we had uh butch he was the lead guitarist uh butch sierra he was the lead guitarist you know just outstanding guitar player he was the oh there's three white guys that was in the group yeah. and then also larry greenberg he was a uh, keyboardist okay <laughs> you know i heard you right okay <laughs> okay we'll work on that so um you know shout out to larry greenberg butch sierra um the Dunnan sisters, Dolores, Denise, and Benita, or Bonnie, whichever one she like to be called and stuff. Okay, okay. Let me finish what I'm doing. I got you. I got you. <laughs> okay. So this, is, this has got very interesting real quick. But definitely I want to shout them out and thank them for letting me be a part. Why is my mic keep falling? For letting me be a part of such a monumental event and being able to, to do the behind the scenes. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of other people involved too. And, you know, shout out to Anissa. Doogie, Anissa Doogie, uh, Lena, Ophelia, uh, I'm trying not to look at the picture, um, Dwayne and Rashid. Um, wow, you're like at the Oscars trying to name everybody. I'm trying to name everyone. We took a picture yeah. of everybody together. We yeah. took a picture of everybody together, and I'm trying to picture the picture because when I was editing the pictures, I only got halfway through the pictures, and you've seen some of them already, but. I'm editing the picture. Somehow there's a picture with me in it. So I didn't really drink. So I'm trying to figure out how did I take a picture of myself? You didn't. Probably someone else. Well, they ended up telling me I let somebody else. Shout out to Bertha for taking the picture. I, I said, I gave her the camera and said, take a picture. And somehow I ended up on Philia's lap, mm -hmm. which I couldn't understand that. Right. But I ended up on her lap and everything. It's just a group that works so hard. Everywhere they go, it's always that same group. Right. And we work hard. Uh, Pamela, Patricia, I can't forget my little sis, Patricia. Um, I got two more people in my head. I, I can't think of the names right now because I need to look at them. What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. I'm just 
listening. I'm listening. Okay. So. I was just moving my stuff around. Okay. So, I'm moving my stuff around too because what I want to do. You know, I'm not used to this radio world. I'm, I'm trying to. I'll let it go. Yeah. Because I'm going to move this over here. After you clean the, the lens. And I want to do that. Okay. Because I need to move over myself. Cause I'm, we got to watch that candle. You don't set your laptop on fire. <laughs> I might get a new one. <laughs> yeah, right? You know? Okay. That's more important right there. So, again, thank you for Lazy Sky for letting me. Yeah, but then they won't see you. It's all about you. Well, we could just push it out further, no? That's the director in me. I don't know. Uh, exactly. Yep. Okay. Be the Sorry. producer. Let me be the director. Got it. <laughs> okay, Got but, it. You, but you are right, because I, I didn't want to. Yeah, because I want people to see you as well. I just didn't want to move the candle. I can move the candle. The candle's so pretty, too. There we go. All right. All right, there we go. Yep, you just have to move in closer. I'm moving in closer. I just got to make right. sure I don't cover your camera. Did I move her camera? Is she good now? Oh, we good? Okay. Now, Today is Tuesday, uh, the third Tuesday in March, and we always do uh, Stewart Cinema and Cafe's industry news. What? You have to push it this way a little bit. <laughs> I want to make sure everybody can see you. Okay. Why would I push it that way for them not to see me? It's got to come this way. Oh, the other way. Yeah? Okay. There we go. <laughs> We are having way this too is, much fun tonight. This will happen when you don't have a DJ. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so this is what this is what we're gonna. That's, uh, that's your pro. So you're like, gotta, I would have been gotta, like, oh my god. No, nah, no, nah, I gotta work it out. I gotta work it out. Okay. So, um, like I said, Stuart Cinnamon Cafe Industry News. I love this segment because there's a lot of actors and actresses and producers and directors who don't get this information. And they don't know who to talk to. And your thing is you want to talk to the masses mm -hmm. instead of just, you know, people come up to who know you. And if they don't know you, somebody says, just ask Emily, she'll tell you. Mm -hmm. You know, but a lot of people don't know that. Right. So what we want to do now, don't look at the camera. So what we want to do now <laughs> is just go over a lot of stuff that a person, they should know. Either an owner, a producer, an actor, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like I said today on the post, like, I definitely want to talk about the trials and tribulations that you're going through right now. Oh my God. You know, <laughs> so that's the main thing I want to talk about. And I hope that we can get a, enough uh, inf information because there's a lot of people who are owners of a lot of different things and they need to hear it from the horse's mouth, not calling you a horse. They're, they're, well, they're going through it too. Everybody, yes. everybody is. Yeah, everybody okay. who owns a business, everybody who works. Definitely. So to start off, what was your um, reaction when they started saying that you got to shut down or you might be shutting down because i know if you hear mike that means stay open i didn't i stayed open till last night <laughs> <laughs> i was like what close yeah. when is the very last minute i could i could close mm -hmm. and so last night was last our night? last movie we were showing um a kid from coney island Okay. Which was doing so well. You oh, saw the it. Stephen Marbury? Yeah, I came yes. up there and saw it. It was really it good. Theater. Isn't it great? It's great. So I was, I was really bummed out to have to cut that short. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so we did the last screening of that last night. So what was, what was the first thing you did? Because you're the type of person, you'd be like, what? And then next thing you know, you go into yeah, you know, producer mode. I have to say that just I'm much more of, of a leader. So I excel when it comes to, oh, there's a huge problem, we gotta find a solution, like, mm -hmm. you know, in the military, I was the guide on barrier, so I'm like, used to, used to leading, right? All the, all the managing is the problem, it's not like the leading is, is, is the easy part. So I, you know, we had contingency plans that we didn't even know we had, so we-, we put That's them. what I was gonna ask you, what yeah. was the contingency plans? So, so thankfully, Stewart Cinema and Cafe, when I built it, I built it with multiple streams of income. Okay. Um, so there's various businesses in this one under this one umbrella, and so the theater, as a movie theater, is one business, and the theater as a rental is another business, and the theater as it's used for community services is another thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where the kids' video gaming comes in, the church that takes place on Sundays, right? So that's a different sort of um, 
revenue stream mm -hmm. and then there's the movies right so now we're doing uh, first run second run motion pictures all of that stuff that's another stream and then there's the regular rentals there's film festivals that's a different umbrella and then there's the cafe right so the cafe has two purposes it um, serves to feed all the people in the community who come right. and get their lunch and their dinner and then it's also food for the theater Right. So um, once we eliminated the theater as a as a source of income, then we moved to uh, using the cafe. So, for example, we're going to be serving food from 11 to 4, okay. seven days a week. So that's sort of our lunch rush hour. And all of the people who are working from home who come to the cafe to pick up some food. Mm -hmm. um, so we're open seven days a week right now. Uh, 11 to 4 and so that's going to continue to run and our catering business as well and obviously I continue to do consulting and those types of things so thank God that we have multiple streams of, of income right okay yeah now so I didn't have to shut down completely now are you worried about like you're doing this and you're worrying about this might last longer so I don't think it's going to last that long in terms of in terms of the theater being closed. Right. I think there's a lot of people advocating for the theater to be open. So um, I'm thinking three weeks tops that we will oh, be really? closed. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're going to open it in small doses. So maybe okay, it'll be uh, 50 people can be in, in a space, then mm -hmm. 100 people, then we could go back to normal. So I think it's going to be incremental, but I don't see this going through the summer or September, like people are saying, well, in I terms of not. businesses being closed, because, you know, how, how are we going to, the, the impact to the economy is outrageous outrageous mm -hmm. so i just i was reading today some numbers uh -oh. because yeah i'm a numbers girl uh -oh. so i was reading today some numbers and they were talking about like the box office um loss represented um by this situation that's happening now is is some crazy number like two billion dollars if march april and may the theaters are closed because that's how the studios make the bulk of their money Right. I mean, they're going to go straight to streaming right now. Mm -hmm. There's a few movies, actually, that'll be available Friday. Invisible Man, The Hunt, Emma. Those are going to be streaming on Friday because the theaters aren't open anymore. Streaming on what? On, like, uh, Netflix, Hulu, uh, Amazon, YouTube, uh, YouTube TV. So they'll be available online. So you won't even have to go to the movies because you can't. But that represents a major financial loss for the studios. They can't, you know, the studios make the bulk of their money through theatrical, which is 90 days. Right. And at this point, they're lucky if they got, you know, 30 days. So, right. and Trolls, that the movie that just oh, came out. So that, that's going to, um, to live stream, I think, April 10th. Hmm. So, yeah. So it's going to be a lot cheaper. Yeah, it's nineteen ninety nine. Those movies will be. They already set the price. If it's on Netflix and if you're a subscriber, you don't have to pay that, do you? Right. Ah, right. so looking right. about like seven dollars. So, but it's going to probably be on pay stream. So like Amazon. Right. Um, Google Pay, iTunes. Which Which one do you think is the best? You have YouTube TV, Amazon TV, Hulu, Netflix, all the, all these different streaming sites and stuff. Which one is the best one in your opinion? So if it's not going to get you in trouble. Yeah, it'll probably get me in trouble. But, but they don't answer it, though. But, yeah. So I, you know, I like Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. but also because there's a lot of independent stuff on there. Okay, I can understand so that, that from Because you. filmmakers are uploading their own content, so mm -hmm. I love that stuff, So right. and I try to support, so um, I like Amazon Prime. But in terms of streaming, I think YouTube has the best platform. Really? Yeah, it's the same price. They're all pretty much $19.99, $14.99, whatever it is to buy a film. Um, you know. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think you would say that. Yeah. iTunes is good, too. I find it a little more... iTunes got TV? Yeah, they have regular movies. Really? Yeah, just like music. I they know. have, so it's music, movies. Well, yeah, I don't have an iPhone, shows. so I don't look at that, but still. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. So, yeah, that wouldn't apply to you. No, definitely but yeah. not. I got a real so, phone. So, yeah. They're, the industry, the studios are losing a ton of money, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of pressure on the government uh, because Hollywood represents a lot of money for everybody. So Definitely. 
All right, that's, that's yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah. I, I never would have looked at it like that. Mm -hmm. So out of, since you had the theater open, the mm -hmm. theater open, what's been the roughest thing that's ever happened up to this point? Would, do you consider this situation now like the, the, the roughest that you've ever been through? Um, so they're rough in different ways. Okay. I, you know, <laughs> I've had a lot of things happen to me <laughs> since I opened this place. Um, there's been major, major, I know you're laughing because you've been there for some of them. But so I've had, I've had a lot, a lot of success. But behind the scenes, um, a lot of stuff has happened. Definitely. You know, I had vandalism. Mm -hmm, I remember so that. somebody like tagged up my my sign Signs. and it was brand new. It was still shiny. I think it was like um, what it was like three weeks old or something like that. Was uh, it yes, that? yes. And I yeah. paid all this money and I had them custom made and put up and all this stuff. Yep. And these like people came and, and wrote all over it. Mm -hmm. Um but they caught him, which was good. Oh yeah. I and the that. community got together and cleaned my sign, which was so nice. Yeah, and definitely. I got twenty four hour security out of that deal. Definitely. So that was nice. Um and then we had floods. I remember so that. The, right. So I had a I was in the middle of a premiere with with a filmmaker. Bless his heart. He was so patient. But yeah, so people were in there watching the movie and, and it and water just gushed into the theater. And those people sat there, put their feet up and finished watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and the carpet was like shh, shh, making that slush sound. Um, and that was was very like stressful for me. Mm -hmm. Um and then I had another flood when people were sitting in the cafe having their lunch. It was crowded. It was empanada day. Mm -hmm. And there goes the water gushing past the people in the cafe and into the theater. Um, and so I, yeah, so I think this is probably the most difficult public Okay. situation because okay. I'm getting tons and tons of emails and people calling and are you okay is everything okay what are mm -hmm. you gonna do do you, what's your plan when are you gonna open um so publicly sorry yeah, this I is, wanted those calls <laughs> yeah so publicly this is this is um tough now how are you handling we was talking and how are you handling people that was already booked mm. how you how do you handle that especially when you got a contract yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. Okay. But well, you know you I was going there. <laughs> so here's the thing. We have a um, non-refundable policy mm -hmm. that's in our contract. Okay. But I built this for filmmakers, and so not so much for the bigger companies and the big film production companies that mm -hmm. are renting the space that can afford the hit. But for the filmmakers, it, it really is heavy on my heart because I um, – built this for them and I know how hard it is for them to come up with the money to do a screening so at this juncture we are working with all of those people to reschedule mm -hmm. their um, events so we're giving them a credit for six months and so as soon as this is over those people will have priority in rescheduling because we already have a backlog of people waiting right so um, yeah they're gonna get priority and they'll be able to reschedule Right. their um, events and we'll probably throw in some free popcorn and everything yeah well, i'll be there but only, only reason why i brought that up because i know how you are and how important for the independent filmmakers a lot of people are like oh it's just a business or whatever but yeah it's a total different thing with anybody you work with or you help out and stuff is it's not business it's personal mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you could be a little cutthroat sometimes you cut deep I but could be gangster with the business. You stuff. cut deep. I don't play. I don't heard some stuff I didn't <laughs> want to hear. You cut deep. I don't play. But at the same time, mm -hmm. people need to know yeah. that don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> you cry? I think it's a light. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a rough week, but I'm not ready to cry yet. People need to know that mm -hmm. your industry, um, your theater and the business that you work in, it's not all about business. Now you're not gonna let nobody shaft you though. Mm. But at the same time, you go above and beyond for every person who does business with you. And that's one thing I need for everybody to know. That's yeah. the type of person you are. You do stuff that you don't have to do. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. you know. And people have tried to get over. And then you got to check them and stuff like that. You do it with a smile on your face. It's hilarious. you know. <laughs> it's very hilarious. But people need to know, like, Stuart Cinema Cafe is not necessarily a business. It's a family. Yeah. And everybody comes in there, they feel like they're at home. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, I'm in here, I'm having a good time. I, you know, you, you come out, hey, you know, people are like, where's my empanada? 
you know, yeah. and I can't get people out of the theater. Yeah. That's the big thing when we have events. Mm-hmm. This is why I can't book events back to back. Because people will hang out in the theater even after we have movies. We turn the lights on and people hang in there to chat about the movie, to talk about, you know, what did you think? And then people start talking to each other. People who don't know each other because it's 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 a very sort of homey, mm-hmm. warm, welcoming environment. And when you look at all of our Google reviews and things that people have written about us on Facebook or, 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 or Google, it's all about it's a small theater, but it's so comfy and it's so warm and it's so inviting. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what I wanted. Because if people are going to come to watch, whether it's motion pictures or independent film, mm-hmm. I wanted them to feel like they were home and relaxed. And so we, we try not to have too many policies and procedures right. for the customers. You know, some theaters, you have to wait outside. You can't go in. You can't do this. You can't do that. We, we try to be very sort of like, this is, this is home. Mm-hmm. And so we want you to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. Even got somebody to bring you popcorn while you're in the theater. You know, like, if oh. your movie starts, we don't want you to miss it. We'll bring right. you some popcorn. See, we'll, yeah, we try. And, and again, that's what I want people to know about the yeah. theater because, you know, it's even a good place just to hang out. Yeah. You know? yeah. Please have something to do, but don't come in there just like We have gonna... lots of people just sitting in the cafe all day. Well, I, 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 I do it sometimes. Hanging I do out. It sometime, but working, though. Some people are working on people their computer. People writing their books or yeah, writing yeah. a movie or building scripts. a Scripts. I love when people yes, go there to, yes. to work on their scripts. And, and also, like, there's a lot of people that people don't know. There's a lot of people mm-hmm. who they will be shocked that would just show up at a, at a drop of a dime like, hey, you'd be like, okay. Uh, uh, you know, I just saw him in a motion, motion, ma- major motion picture. Yeah. And they'll pop up at any time. And it's not like, oh, I'm a star, this and that. It's, they're so, every, at least they everybody They eat I'm empanadas at, too. Yeah, and, and they'll sit there and relax. Lemonade. Yeah. And that's all they want to do is just yeah. relax and yeah. stuff. And if you come in, yeah. you know, you, I think any time that you come in and stuff, you don't want to be like, you see a star, you want to be like, oh, it's more like, oh, okay. You know, because it's become so commonplace mm-hmm. at Stewart Cinema, right. people will walk in and sit next to them and not harass them. Exactly. And they come in and they watch movies and they leave. Um, and that's sort of the environment that we want. So we want it to be, yes, for the stars who come in and have a great time, mm-hmm. but also for the families, the seniors. Yes, you know, the kids. The, the kids, they yeah. love coming. They get yes. free candy. They get popcorn. Say so what now? Yeah, they do. They do. We, we, we love the why kids, so we kids? always we take care of them. But, yeah, so we, we want everybody to feel at right. home. But that's work. Creating that type of environment has been a lot of work. I didn't realize. I thought that just, like, this is what I want and this is what happens. It is a constant paying attention to the details, mm-hmm. which I'm not really that good at. Thank God for the staff. <laughs> Shout out to C.J. Gilbert. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. That man, he bless tolerant. his heart. Yes, he, 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 can, he works hard. Yes, yeah, yes. He, he greets hard. everybody the same way. He chats with everybody. Sometimes I'm just like, Carl, you got to get some work done. You can't be out there talking to people. Come inside and get some work if done. they only knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so. so for your spot and stuff, you can't say like any one star that's been in there. Not, you know, because at any given time, there's going to be somebody major there, Mm -hmm. you know, any time. But here's, hear me out, people. Emily don't know everybody. (laughs) Hear me out, this, you know, and shout out to Madonna. You know, Mm -hmm. you know, I was going to bring up, but Emily don't know everybody, but she treats. I don't recognize everybody. That's okay. That's different. I know that I don't recognize them. And so when they walk in, which is great because Mm -hmm. everybody gets treated the same because I can't always. Well, you're, you're, Recognize you've people. always been the type that nobody's bigger than the other person. That's true. You know, so that's, that's absolutely so it's true. like it's universal, you know, like, okay, Obama just walked in. Hold on one second. I need to handle him first. Uh, now, what would you tell me? And B- Obama would have to stand there and wait until you're ready, yeah. you know, which is gangster. That's why, that's why we don't have, um, we try not to make October Film Festival about celebrities. You have a couple and, of and, sometimes. And why? No, they do come, but it's not about them. Right. Right? It's about the filmmakers. It's about the actors and the producers in those films. Mm-hmm. And so unlike some of the other festivals, we really try to focus on the, on the just independent filmmakers, and we try not to make it about the celebrities. Right. Well, most of the times you just don't tell anybody who's coming, and they just pop up. Now, that's right. the, since I've but been going. But that's the trick because it's not about them. Right. 
and they'll just pop up because they just want to see something or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Now, um, what did you think about, like, uh, the president said some stuff today about... Uh, Who, the president? What president? <laughs> Don't you talk to me about the president. <laughs> okay. The governor said some stuff today. Okay, <laughs> yes, yes. Now, he, talk about the governor, the mayor. Okay, okay. One thing that um, I woke up to this, and he was saying basically, yes, they want to, you know, want everybody to stay home, but he's also saying the kids are home. Don't keep them cooped up. Take them to the park. Take them to the park, but no closed-in area. What is your thoughts on that? Because you got kids, and you always all over the place. So what do, you, what do you think about what he was saying about that? So one of the first things we did when the announcement came out mm -hmm. about the social distancing right. is thankfully our theater is set up so that we can move the seats around. Exactly. I was like, for, I was thinking about, you know, we were, we, we actually talked about this yep. where I wanted to convert the theater and put in um, recliners. Yes, and, I remember And that. they were going to be stationary. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, if Bad I do move. that, then I can't move the seats around. Yep. And so like a filmmaker who is having an event and invites 70 people and only 20 show up, I'd have no way of helping that filmmaker out because there would be a whole bunch of empty seats. This way now, if a filmmaker says, hey, I invited 70, but I, I was only, you know, or I wanted to have 70 people, but I'm only having 20 and someone important is going to be in the audience, we can adjust the theater mm -hmm. so that it looks like there's only supposed to be 20 people in there. Right. Um, and, you know, we did Fashion Week event at the theater and yep. we had to readjust everything. So I didn't do the recliners. And now I am thankful that I didn't there because you go. the first thing we had to do <laughs> was create six feet of, of distance between the seats. Mm -hmm. And we were able to do that. Definitely. But I, I definitely think, to your question, that it is important mm -hmm. um, t to maintain a healthy distance. I mean, I'm concerned about my dad, who's 82 and mm -hmm. is at home. And, you know, yeah, so the, there are concerns. And this stuff is real. Like, we're Very not real. taking it lightly. We're open, but we definitely are taking all kinds of precautions. So there's, I don't know if you've been there this week, there's Lysol everywhere. <laughs> there's, there's, yeah, there's um, oh, yeah. hand sanitizer all over the place. You know what I've been meaning to ask you? Uh-huh. And I'm, I'm just shocked that I'm getting ready to ask you this. Uh-oh. What's up with the big King Kong poster in the bathroom? Okay. <laughs> it so got to be a story with it because it scared the heck out because I happened to look up and I said, like, oh, shoot. What's up with that? While you were using that. Yes. <laughs> you looked up. You're like, why does she have this King Kong poster? So the first movie I ever saw in a movie theater was the King Kong movie. Uh, come on. You've seen more than that. No, really? I actually didn't have a television in my room or like that I could have access to until I was 14. Yeah, we had <laughs> we had one. I know that we had one. We had and my brother can tell you we had one TV in the house. Remember the one that was like furniture <laughs> and it had like wood around it and it was like <laughs> you would use it to put stuff on top. So we had one of those that you had to manually turn. And so it was in the living room. And because my parents didn't speak English, it was always turned to channel 41, Galavision, <laughs> right? Or Telemundo. Telemundo. Those, right? So 41 or 47, those are the only two channels. Univision. And, right. And so my, my stepdad didn't really allow us to watch it because it was his TV. And so he was always home because he got home from work at like 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And so... I didn't really have my own TV till I was 14 when I could buy one. And so I never really watched TV. And then we never went to the movies because we were, we were like, my mom was like, that's an extra expense you don't need. I'll tell you a story. <laughs> She's like, we lived on Fifth Avenue and <laughs> in Sunset Park. And she would be like, just look out the window. That's a movie right there. And so, <laughs> yeah. And so King Kong was the... The oh original King Kong was the first right. movie I movie that I saw in movie theaters. That story just explained a lot now. <laughs> right. That's why sometimes you're like, do you remember Woody Woodpecker? I'm like, no. I know Pica Piedras because that's the Flintstones in Spanish. So, yeah, unless the cartoons were in Spanish, I, I don't know. And Spanish is my first language. English is my second language. I didn't really speak English until I was like 12. <laughs> Your mom's back there like, 
Yep. She's, <laughs> my mom is here and she's back there going, uh, yes, yeah, see, sí, see, sí, exactamente, see. Sí. Oh, man, that explains a lot. Now, what are you trying to say that explains a lot? <laughs> look what you're doing now. Yeah. It's yeah, like, okay, I didn't get to see him then. I'm going to make my own. Yeah. You know? Now, you got some notes here, and I know it means so I see a NATO statements and all that yes, stuff like that. So yes. I, I want to go over that and stuff because you didn't give me a copy and stuff. So, Yes. So NATO, which is the National Association of Theater Owners, mm -hmm. put out a, an official statement, and they are the organization that represent theater owners like mm -hmm. myself. Um, and, and basically, they, because everybody was sort of in an uproar about what this was all going to mean for yeah. movies that are upcoming, because, you know, they canceled some of the new releases they're going right. to release next year, or they're pushing them back to September, October. And so we were all sort of on these conference calls, and, and we've been back and forth in email, just kind of figuring out what are we going to do, what do they recommend, because they sort of handle our logistics and, and our policies and things like that. Right. Um, and one of the things that they explained to us, um, and I'm one of the babies in the business in terms of like theater ownership, mm -hmm. and so basically what they were saying is that we shouldn't worry because what this means is that when we finally do come online and theaters are back, we're going to have an amazing selection of films right? because there's a backlog now of great new releases. Um, but the hope is that these, this, you know, that these studios don't end up releasing those films uh, online, streaming them because they don't want to wait. True. But because they lose so much money, we think they're not going to do that. I mean, some of the current ones have decided to do that. The Invisible Man, The Hunt, Emma, and we get that. Um, but we think that's not going to be the norm. Right. So I think they're going to hold out mm -hmm. and that's going to allow us to sort of catch up. So it's not, it's not like we're losing money because, you know, there was a lot of fear that the theaters are losing a lot of money already as it is because of online streaming. Mm -hmm. But um, it's more like we're going to be able to make that money up in the box office later because we will have s some a bigger selection of great films that we can show. So we, you feel like it's going to be a big rush when they release it and stuff because people are tired of sitting yeah, in the house. Yeah, you know, when you, when you look at the numbers, when we had, you know, 9-11 mm -hmm. and we've had all these issues over the years, a lot of times people, you know, go to the movies. Right. So we know that the movies tend to do well when we have recessions because it's people's escape. True. Um, and when you have theaters like mine that's only charging you $10, it's a great escape. With it's some, an affordable escape. With some great popcorn so, and Oh, my God. We pop. Everybody, in case you don't know. So we, <laughs> <laughs> we pop our popcorn with the butter already on it. So you don't have to worry about pouring that fake butter on it, which is really oil. Did you know that yes. it's not butter, that it's actually oil flavored like butter? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Really? No, I didn't know that. I thought it was butter. No. And, then, and then I met with vendors and we were talking and I was like, it's oil? Yep. I don't want to put oil on the popcorn. And so, yeah, so then we found this popcorn that we can pop with actual butter on it already. So we've, I think only once in the year and a half that we've been open, has anyone said, can I have extra butter? Well, because it's, it's so it's, yummy it's, already it's without like you the don't butter. Even really need salt or so we have a lot of people who come just for the popcorn. They don't watch movies. They just come and they buy popcorn and they take it home. And there's a bar up the street that has no food, but you're allowed to bring in your own food. I can't remember the name of it now. So a lot of people come and get the popcorn to take it to the bar to have with their drink. Yes, I know which one you're talking about. It's on so the corner, maybe going, pencil. Going, going, if you come out your theater, going to the right? Yes. Okay, I know which one you're talking about. So because they have no food, but you're allowed to bring something, people come and buy the bags of popcorn and take it there and have it with their whiskey. Do you whiskey. raise the price? No, I don't. I'll just test I you. don't. Eventually, I will have to. But yeah. Oh snap! So, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but I, I haven't. Um, so I, I also, you know, part of the issues that we're having with the industry and just talking about how this stuff affects the industry, right? Which is what I know, um, <laughs> <laughs> because it's a. F I, I, I was on the phone today with other businesses and other people, and I am just like overwhelmed by how this is affecting so many businesses and so right. many. There was a catering business that came in today, and we were chatting, and they were talking about how all of their orders were canceled, and there's no way for them because there's nowhere to sell their food because there's right. no. Nobody so catering. 
they're not even they're not making it and so they are just closing down until things get better and they have no yeah so well, i was watching yesterday where a guy he shut down but the food they had still have there they was giving away and stuff because they couldn't yeah you know yeah we're actually giving 10 percent off to everybody who comes in for food because we figure everybody's got to be struggling oh so now i miss empanada tuesday yeah, right. You could have gotten 10% off. That is But crazy. the empanada is $2.50. <laughs> hey, every little bit counts. <laughs> All right. Okay, then. You know, no, you're right. It was you're a right. recession, you know. You're right. But, you know, one of the um, uh, things that I was reading about and talking to some of the people in production is that some of the shows that we're filming had to stop filming. And some of the shows are actually... <laughs> in their last season and they were shooting their finale you know the 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 finale and um it's actually on tv right now so the show is on it's supposed to finish and and so for example empire is the number one that's really struggling because this was supposed to be their last uh season and they were in the middle of shooting Mm -hmm. and they're on the air and so now they're trying to scramble and figure out what to do because they can't finish shooting the show, but right. it's supposed to end. So um, there's a lot of problems like that. Supernatural is also having the same really? issue. Yeah, I never watched Supernatural. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Um, so it's affecting production everywhere. Right. Because imagine you're in the middle of shooting a show, and you have to stop in the middle of it. Um, and March is sort of like the midpoint for a lot of those shows in terms of shooting the season. So um, that's going to be interesting. That's, yeah, that is interesting. So let me ask you this question because this mm-hmm. kind of popped them out. The, uh, the physical year, the beginning of it, just started like in February, I believe. Mm-hmm. How is that the money that they allotted to build all these new things or whatever, how is that going to affect the industry? Because they already allotted that amount of money out for all this stuff. Now, is the money just still sit there or... Right. Well, that's that's one of the big issues, right, with the distribution of movies, is that um, the P and A money, mm-hmm. you know, for advertising, it's already spent. P- all the commercials already took place. Okay. And all the ads already went out. All the trailers were made. So it's just sitting so, there. No. So that that money was spent. They can't get that back. And now, if the movie doesn't play when it's supposed to. Right. So if there's a movie that's supposed to open this Friday, mm-hmm. there's no theaters to open that movie at. Right. But the money that they allocated for the advertising leading up to the movie. Right. Because they start advertising months before. Right. All of that money's already spent. They can't get that money back. So it really is. It's imagine if you're advertising Dre's, Dre's house. Right. right. You start for today. You started advertising last week. Okay. You paid for ads on Facebook, let's say. You paid for ads in magazines, whatever it is. And then the show doesn't happen. That money's already spent. But can you like hold on to that and stuff until all the stuff goes down and use the same advertising or something like that? No, or? no, because you buy time, you buy space, you buy an ad, right? So you can't. So that money is gone. Hmm. And now people may forget the movie by the time you actually are able to put it out. Which is why they're going on, on um, they're streaming some of the movies. Because the money was already spent. Ah. So they're trying to stop the bleeding. So yeah, that's a problem. Because you start advertising a movie sometimes six months, a year before. Do you think once this, this is over, that independent filmmakers who have projects should, be starting to push their, should start to push their stuff to networks or um movie execs or whatever and stuff you think that'll be a good time it's like you know, this thing is over yeah somebody asked me that earlier today and i think that this is a great time to be shopping around whatever you have okay because there's not much they can do so they can actually focus on new things right um because this is we're at a standstill it's not like they can run around and do something else it's everybody's at a standstill right now. So this is probably a good time to shop your stuff around hmm. if you can reach people. Yeah, that's I interesting. I, I, was, I was thinking about that today, too, because mm-hmm. it's like you know so many outstanding filmmakers. And, mm-hmm. and I'm, I've been blessed enough to meet a lot of them. Mm-hmm. 
And a lot of them have some very, very good products. Mm -hmm. Like Derica, I love everything she's done. Uh, Antone, Allen, did I say his name right, Antone? We just went to the premiere of Lola. I wasn't invited. What? Mm -hmm. And I just gave him a shout out. What, Antoine, what? Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I, I would have. I, I didn't know about it anyway, but still. Uh, yeah. I would have <laughs> so, gotten you on that guest yeah, list. But, I'm going to have to talk to him about that. Yeah, talk to him. <laughs> but but I, I've been lucky enough to meet so many outstanding filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Like Ant, Ant, Antoine, right? Antoine. I, I just say Alan. But he has done some outstanding work. Mm -hmm. and, I, and when he did his uh, thing, he showed like three or four films. I saw Derek's. Derek's messed me up. Mm -hmm. I was like, I need a part two. Um, uh, and uh, Anto so Antoine. Many. Yeah, it was that so whole many, that whole night. I was so like, so many talented. This year at October Film Festival, we saw the most the most amazing work I've seen yet. Ooh. Yeah, it, these filmmakers they brought it, and it, and our judges did a great great job selecting amazing films. And I and it feels good when the filmmakers are sitting in the audience and they're proud to be in that movie block because sometimes you can be and and i'm you know i'm a filmmaker mm -hmm. in, in terms of having my stuff at film festivals and sometimes they put you in a block with like these horrible films or maybe your film is one of the horrible films <laughs> in the Ooh. block and and it just is so um so discouraging right when they put your stuff with all these other films that are not that great but this year I was so happy when the filmmakers were coming out and saying you know what my film was in this great block with all of these other amazing films and they were giving each other props and it was really it warmed my heart and, and, and it's funny is that because there's so many outstanding stuff especially mm -hmm, the documentaries mm -hmm. yeah. are off the hook and I remember when you did it at 72 Symphony Place or whatever? At Symphony Space, yeah. yeah. West on, on the Upper West Side, yeah. Right. And I remember two people that I suggested that they get their film in, they was neck and neck. And the messed up thing about it was I had one on this side, Tony Wesley, Mr. Wave, and then I had the other guy on this side, the guy that ended up winning, um, I can't remember his name, but he had a documentary about kids getting killed. Oh, uh, my God. That his, was like a tear. Yes. Tear jerker. I mean, but both of them were so good. I didn't want to yeah. pick. And I was like, oh, this is my boy. And they sitting there next to each other, and they seeing their yeah. stuff. Yeah, And it was that year, there was a tremendous amount of outstanding films. Yeah. Every year, you get hit it on something different. It gets better. You know why? Because the filmmakers get better. Mm -hmm. They learn how to find money. They learn how to, how to cast properly. Mm -hmm. They're writing better. Yes. They're, they're producing better. And so... I'm just so excited. We already have a ton of films that came in to October Film Festival, and I haven't seen any because the judges will look at them first, and I'll, I'll see whatever the, the top films are that are selected. But I'm already just so excited. I'm because, glad I'm not a part because of that process. I'm, yeah, because I'm watching the filmmakers online all the time. So I'm watching the trailers. I'm mm -hmm. looking to see what they're doing because um, I'm really sort of, you know, I'm in the game with mm -hmm. them so I'm able to see so when those um, submissions come in and I and I see that they're you know they finished because that's another thing so many of them don't get to finish their films mm -hmm. um, so just completing a film is a is a freaking miracle true true. <laughs> it's like a miracle I can if you can make that. a movie from beginning to end right. you know and get through post-production and then actually get it seen so yeah because it's, it's crazy because even last year Film festival, the music videos was off the hook. Yes. And I was like, Yes. How do you pick one? But the one that won, because you know you can't go like, Oh, that's a good video. You you couldn't pick a winner from that. Are you crying again? No, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes are so glistening. I think it's the light. It's oh. killing me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm used to being in the dark. <laughs> that, this that light, light is killing her. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay though. It's all right. I'll live. <laughs> I'll just cry. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't okay. Disregard my, my tears. Oh, my God. But the one that ended up winning, because I watched all four, and yeah. I, I got a chance to meet a couple of the guys that, that was there for the thing. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, all of them are good. So now it came to the point, like, when you pick it, the one I pick, ended up picking was the one that won. I had you a, thought I, that, was, that was the Cassia's, um Yes. Yeah. I, just, I had to look at, like, what can I... Uh, crit, be a critic on because I thought all the concepts was off the hook but then it was like okay 
uh, the way it's filmed, the way that part was edited. And, and that's why I had to look at it because all of them should have won. Yeah. They was that good. You, you know, know, I feel sometimes every year I go through this and thank God there are judges because mm-hmm. I'm like a kindergarten teacher. Everybody, everybody wins. Everybody gets a cookie. Every, everybody. <laughs> come get your star. <laughs> yeah. Everybody gets a gold star. Um, but yeah, we had, and I was very happy that this year uh, some of the music video people reached out mm-hmm. to us afterwards and we were able to connect them with ASCAP people definitely in the music industry just to be able to talk to them and say hey you know this this is what's needed this is what you need to do mm-hmm. um so just to be able to create those connections yeah. for us is and is amazing that's what i was going to lead into you stole my segue but oh, sorry. um there's <laughs> one thing that the october film festival does is connected to people that you need to talk to yeah to better your game yeah and, and, you know, there's been producers, you know, major people that's done major stuff. Mm-hmm. They've done this. And then the young filmmakers come in and it could be somebody that could take them to the extremely next level. Yeah. And we have seen that, you know. So one thing about your filmmaker, you don't put it like, okay, one thing you do, you don't make the film festival about yours and stuff, which is About cra- me. Yeah, which I've is crazy. I've never had one of my own films screen at my film festival, ever. Because I feel that's a conflict of interest. Yeah, especially if you own it and then, you know, like. Uh, but you'd be surprised. You know, be like, you fired. No, you know? <laughs> you'd but, be surprised. But I mean, but it's like when you go to, I don't know, what am I doing here? Okay, but when, when you go through it and, and as you do everything and you see these films and you see these young filmmakers and you, you're looking at them, because I see you sometimes, you know, you be walking around and stuff, but when the scene of filmmaker, even getting their name called and stuff, the look on their faces is like, mm-hmm. oh my God, I made it. Yeah. You know, and the ones, the, the, un, the usual suspects, Antoine, Derricka, they always got outstanding stuff. Yeah. It's like a given. But those new filmmakers and just seeing the look on their face, when I, when I interviewed the guy, um, he kind of, it was like a kind of crazy, he had on all white, the music video. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I can't remember his name, but we're Facebook friends the, now. Yeah. But it was all in white and stuff. And just talking to him. Yeah. And watching He's him. He's talented. The, oh, straight. Dancer. Dance everything and oh stuff. Oh, my I mean, God. I think he, he lives in California. Yeah, yeah. And when his, when his film played, and as I'm watching it, I just looked at him. And he was like. Yeah. Like. Beaming. Because he yeah. was proud. He was proud of his work. And we all loved. You know what I did different this year um, for October Film Festival that was kind of different? Is I had a motivational speaker. Yes. At the award show. And you did it at lunchtime. Yes, because normally we have a celebrity who comes and talks about their production company and their journey. But I like felt like, and Delano wrote that book, Talented and Broke, mm-hmm. which I, I love. It's like one of my favorite books. I have it. It's all, I still read books. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> I, yeah. And I, and I write in when them. When do you have and time I, to do that? I Listen, every night, every morning, I, I read all the time, all mm-hmm. the time. I'm still old-fashioned that way. But um, his book was amazing. And I thought, like, how many filmmakers are struggling with uh, just having all this talent but still being broke? I mean, this is, this is the only industry where you could graduate from Yale with a degree in drama, Mm -hmm. where you could be the most talented person and not be able to make money from that talent. And that, but we can't have that. That's unacceptable. And so when I built a theater, I built it with that in mind. Like people who rent this space to show their film should be able to make money. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the model is set up. But it shouldn't be that way. You should be able to do what you do and make money doing it if you're good at it. Right. And there's this, yeah, so this year I had, or last year I had a motivational speaker just kind of speak, you it was know, good. speak life into, into people. Because no, I felt like really sometimes good. we, the dreams and the struggle, we drop, you know, we die in that mm-hmm. place. And so, yeah, I was no, excited and, about that. Yeah, and let people know, like, I went against not, the grain with that, though. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And you had Deacon sing. Who? Deacon. Oh, yeah. I know you didn't just say who. <laughs> that was the it's, year before. I thought it was last year. No. Dude, who was that? No, it was the year before. So now I got both, both of them mixed up. I know you Because I, I know I was there. Yeah, that was the year before. You know what? I'm, I'm thinking something else. Okay. I know you are. That was the year before. Yeah. That was great, too. Yeah, that was great. Deacon was good. Oh, always. 
Yeah. Always. Yeah. And congratulations, Deacon yeah. just got married. Really? Yeah, Congrats, Deacon. I don't Good for he, you. I don't even think he's a man in yet. Wow. So, yeah, still fresh. You know, got to come back to reality sooner or later. Solving problems. <laughs> okay. So what, what advice could you give to a filmmaker who just can't get it together? What do you mean by get it together? Because there's so many aspects to that question. Okay. Like just let, me, let me fine stream it here. Um, okay. I'm going to say I'm a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to use me for example, but dumb stuff that I do. But you're a creator. Right? Yeah, you're yeah. creative. I'm, I'm creative, but I do a lot of dumb stuff and everything. And I'm just like lucky. Like what? Oh, I'm about to get there. I'm okay. just, but I, I got to throw the disclaimer. I'm okay. lucky if people will rein me in. It's like, mm. uh, you know that's not going to work. Mm. You know? So... You know, you gotta, you know, okay, just say like me, hypothetically, I made a movie. It's okay, but, you know, it's not gonna do anything, but I feel like it's just the bee's knees, all right? And I feel that you should show it at your theater, but I don't need your advice. How would you handle that? Well, because you know that happens a lot. Yeah, I already thought about that. <laughs> We, we took care of that when we were building the place. <laughs> so we, we do not select the movies that play at Stewart Cinema. So okay. we have set it up that if you're a filmmaker and you think that your movie should be in a theater, mm -hmm. then you rent the theater and you show your movie. And it shows right up there with Avengers and Joker and all these other movies. Um, so you have the power to do that. Because okay. one of the problems that we have in the industry is that there's these gatekeepers and they get to decide. Right. Um, and I wanted to remove that power away mm -hmm. and put that power in the hands of the artist. And that's why we have comedians and we have spoken word. And so if you think that your film or your talent is worthy, then we will facilitate that for you. You get to decide that. So I'm not making that decision. Right. And I'm, I'm glad you said that because something just popped in my head. You're very big on this is your project. Yes. You know, not, this is not a Stuart Cinema project. That's this right. This is your project. We try not to, to sponsor or endorse right. individual projects. Right. And, and I've seen that many times. You know, and I've seen people. Events, too. Like, we, we, try, yes. we try not to sponsor mm -hmm. and get personally involved right. with events. Because exactly. Because it, it gets dicey. Yeah, it definitely gets dicey. Yeah. But in the process and doing that, you know, you put it like, this is your film. This is your event. You got my space. Don't mess it up. You get the money. Up. And that's another thing. You're getting if, the money, so. <laughs> like you said, when you built it for the independent person and stuff, mm -hmm. instead of paying thousands of dollars mm -hmm. to, um, to have your stuff shown, like, you know, at any other place. I don't know anywhere else that you can get your stuff shown at your price. Right. You know, it's nowhere. And even the big boys, they want to come in. Well, and they're show using it, right? And that's kind of your conflict of interest right there. Because I remember when they started coming really heavy, and you was like, oh, this is for the independent makers, I, but I can't yeah. tell them no, and this and that. And yeah. it became a conflict of interest. You calm down on it, like, because you don't talk about it that much now. Because I have found a balance. Yeah, but when it started, yeah. and those big, them heavy duty people was coming at you, and you was like, oh, it's for the filmmakers, this and that, or whatever. But like you said, you got the balance and stuff. Mm -hmm. they, they come in and pay top price more than what you ask. You know, so that's, that's amazing and stuff. But um, back to what I was saying. How would you handle, handle that? Because I know you don't try to get involved, but there's people, friends or not friends, they're very adamant. You know, and they think their stuff is better than what it is. Because for me, I know what I do is good, but I'm not going to say I'm, my stuff is better than anybody else's. I just let the number speak for itself. You know, I don't have to brag about my stuff. But how would you handle that? You know? You know, so. <laughs> yeah, I put it out there. Keep talking. So I, you know, as a producer, mm -hmm. I've had what I call ugly babies. Right? And ugly babies is that, that movie that I have that I feel like it's not the best movie, uh, but I now have to sell it like it's the best thing since sliced bread. 
And when it comes to films, a lot of times I see a lot of films that I don't think are great getting distribution um, and getting accolades. Right. So I think that one beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I also believe that it's in the hustle. Mm, okay. A lot of the filmmakers that are making it are backing up that talk when, with when, a lot of hustle. When you, when you say the hustle and stuff, because I wouldn't know what you meant by that and stuff. Because a, a lot of stuff, like a lot of people are, you know, like you said, you may not think it's great, but like they hustle. What kind of hustle are they doing, though? So, how did you get me here? I asked you. Or do you, or do you want me to go way back? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, I, you, but that's, you're a perfect example. Like, you've been hustling. Okay. You're good, but, you, but your hustle outdoes your talent. And a lot of times, because we have so many disadvantages mm -hmm. as independent artists, the hustle has to outdo your talent because talent is not enough. Okay. Right? I don't because know how, how many that, but okay. No, because how many <laughs> how many really amazing talented people get nowhere? True. It's not enough. And I know that for me that's been my experience. I'm a good producer. Mm -hmm. Right? But my hustle, I can yeah. outwork any producer. Yeah, I'm gonna give you that. Any day. I give you that. Right. I, I am I am reading. I am doing the work mm -hmm. every day, even when I don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. And so the hustle, I think, is what. Where it's at okay, to I, win in, in a game where there's so many disadvantages. I, I would give you that. And the hustle also, instead of you going for it, it comes to you. Mm -hmm. And I think where a lot of people are like, um misinformed because if you work on your craft you work on your product the hustle when you don't think you hustling as you say but your hustle is doing a good project yeah you're putting that work in and stuff connecting to integrity. the right people integrity a lot of integrity integrity you know, cuz i could say what was amazing for me was i never even looked at a lot of stuff and i just said i got to give a good show that's the only thing i was worried about i yep. got to give a good show i got to give a sh I got to get this focus. And, and shout out to uh, Ray Riaz and stuff, because he sat me down and said, don't do that, or, or you're mm -hmm. going to do that, or whatever. He taught me a lot of stuff. Because you always need someone. There's always someone. Yeah. There's always someone. Who's not afraid to tell you the truth. Yeah. And, and I, who's willing to invest, whether it's time, yeah. right? Because time is, is, is worth cash. Sometimes yeah. my time is much more valuable than any kind of check I could write. True. So it's somebody willing to invest in you, somebody mm -hmm. who believes in you, something that, somebody who sees something in you. Right. Because I would say for, I think it was like my third year or something or whatever, and for me just doing my show, and all I'm focused on is doing my mm -hmm. show, and for um, Kevin Spann to come up to me and just out the blue, he's like, Dre, I'm like, what's up? He's like, I want to be a sponsor. I'm like, really? I never thought about getting sponsors. But he just come bust that out and stuff. And I was like, he was like, how much? I was like, uh, let's talk about this. That's a very good question. So why did you never think about getting sponsors? Um, I didn't think my show was where I wanted it to be. Yeah. You know, but I have been told by you, Kevin, But do KP, you see now how that was, how that was? wrong how you shortchanged um, yourself i do that a lot yeah. personal and business yeah but i always work hard right but you always feel like it's not enough oh it's never enough right never and enough so the big ask you know um squeaky more i know she's watching but squeaky <laughs> always <laughs> always talks about the big ask mm -hmm. ask big you know it's okay to ask for a million dollars ask for it you know, and I think you oh. sometimes are afraid to ask. I am editing this and sending it to you. The now, big ask. But I, I never ask, though. I never ask. Why? I but just, that's the thing. We have to ask. Yeah, but I have to, like, I'm, and I'm using me for an example, everybody. I'm using me for an example. I feel that I need, for my comfortability, mm -hmm. I want to be in a certain place. I know how I want stuff to look. I, want, I know how I want stuff to go. And it's in my head because I study my craft a lot. 
and people laugh at me when I say when I say this and stuff. I watch all these shows, and I watch the main one I watch is uh, Tom Jordan because he's the epitome of everything. So you see it in your head how mm -hmm. you want it to be, right? And then what keeps you from getting it the way you want it to be? Oh, finance. That's an excuse. I know it's an excuse, but still. That's an excuse. Okay, here we go. That's an excuse. Everybody, that's an excuse. You know the camera's right here, right? <laughs> oh, that's an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. No, I mean, I'm, I'm my worst critic, and I will admit that. I would look at the show later on. I was like, oh, my God, what the heck? What the heck was I doing? You know, oh, too much dead space. Or oh, I said that I'm wrong. I'm going to tell you, like Ava DuVernay says, just do it. Okay. Create. Well, you know, I do, do that and stuff. But at the same time, for me, I've been blessed enough to everything that I'm doing. People have come to me like, I want to work with you. Or I want to do this. I want to do that. But yeah. then at that point, and this is the part that gets me nervous, I have to come correct. You, know? you should be coming correct no matter what. Yeah, exactly and stuff. But for so me, that when people come, you're already correct. Well, well I mean, people, <laughs> I'm always correct and stuff. And it's like, it goes with everything. Doing the radio, doing photography, videography, um, entertainment and stuff. Like, I do a lot of stuff, but in my mind, I hold myself to a higher standard. And to see the people that I respect come to me and it's like, mm -hmm. what can I do to help you? Mm -hmm. You know? And I know it's not no alternative motive. Now, I got a lot of people that got extreme alternative motive. And I get it all the time. Oh, I want to be on your show. No. What are you got to talk about? Yeah. You know? That's, that's where you need discernment. The what? Discernment. It's like how you can tell the difference between, you know, good and evil. How you can look at a situation and say, this is not for me. Well, I do that all the time. Right. And, and as you get older, and as you experience more things, and as you take more beatings, <laughs> you, you learn right. to, to discern between what's for you and what's not for you. So when people come with an ulterior motive, before they can even open their mouth, you already know. Well, I already know, but I still got to hear them out, because I'm not going to be disrespectful to anybody. I will hear you out, and then I'll come back like, that's ah, not going to work for me. Right, but that was a waste of your time that you could have used for something else. Well, I look at it like so this. So I don't think you have to be disrespectful, but I definitely have learned in this season mm -hmm. to say no. Well, I'm not saying no, but here's the thing for me. In the early days that I started doing radio, I had no intention. There's no way in the world I should be sitting where I'm at. You know, there's no way. Cause it wasn't even a plan. I was, it was mm -hmm. just a bucket list. I wonder if I can do it. I was only supposed to do it for a couple of months. Mm. You know, but at the same time, you know, as time went on, people either came to me, because I'll ask a question, I'm like, how do you do this? Or can you introduce me to this person or whatever? Right. And I want to give people that chance as well. It's just like you. There's people that come to you that they're hungry and they want to do it or whatever. Whether it's a bet, uh, alternative motive or whatever it is and stuff, I have to count my blessings and pay it forward. Yeah. To the point I would never tell nobody if they ask me questions. No. Now I'm gonna give you some ideas. I'm saying this is what worked for me. Take what I'm doing and flip it and make it yours. Mm -hmm. And I always say that. Now if you choose not to do it, go for yeah. it. You know. Yeah. But I'm, I'm big on that giving back and paying it. Well, forward. you always do. Yeah. You always do. Yeah. You know, and I'm big. You know, my giving back is just say like, oh, I need to do this or whatever. And I've done this many times and mm -hmm. stuff. I was like, I know somebody you can contact. Her name was Emily Stewart. Email her mm -hmm. and ask her the questions that you ask. She might can help you out. And I, you know, or I know Kevin Spann. You know, you know, you need some insurance. This is the person that you need yes, to talk to. Yes, Kevin, I have to call him. I need insurance. <laughs> I, gotta, I don't even know. <laughs> you know, this just reminded me. I'm sorry. Totally. <laughs> you know that show was a long time ago, right? <laughs> you know because. <laughs> I need to find out <laughs> if my insurance covers emergency disaster oh type situation. But anyway, okay. Oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> Let me make a note. I got to call the insurance. Oh, my. I will <laughs> call him tonight and make sure. <laughs> you are a mess. It didn't cover the flooding, so I don't know. But you, you were supposed to make a meeting with him, and he yeah, asked you. Y'all yeah. sat in here and talked yeah. about it. I finally yeah. got y'all two to meet. Oh, my God. And I recently, this is the thing that I'm learning about business, all the stuff that I never had to deal with before. Mm -hmm. But I recently got um, audited from my workers' comp. I remember that you told me that. I was like, who, what? 
who does this? Mm -hmm. And and apparently it is perfectly normal. I was freaking out at this one person I don't want to have any problems with. It's Uncle Sam. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, and so I got a letter saying I was being audited for payroll and all this other stuff. And you panicked. I panicked. Yes. I... (laughs) I was calling lawyers and accountants. I was like, what is going on? But anyway, so I learned about that process. Mm -hmm. um, And eventually I'll be able to teach all the things I've learned. But yeah, so it's a process. And so. Well, everything turned out all right. Yes, yes. It turns out I was overpaying. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, paying too much. But yeah. Anyway, sorry. I digress. You you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. (laughs) Now now I got to bring you back down here. I got to bring you back down here. Let me ask you this question. How do you work with somebody you do not like? Not necessarily like and stuff. You don't like the way they move. But you still, I know you do. I don't even know if you like me, but you always been there to help with information, get me to the right person or whatever. How do you handle that? So as a woman, I, uh, and I'm sure everybody deals with this, but as a woman, I often have to work with men who I don't necessarily like. And I say that specifically about men because sometimes they don't treat women uh, fa- fairly. Okay. I want to say fairly. I don't want to say correctly. Fairly. Okay, I'll give you that. Um, and, and I still have to get the job done. So what I've learned is... <laughs> Kevin's watching. <laughs> yeah. What I've learned is I don't have to like the person as much as I have to respect them. Okay. There's a lot of people who don't like me. And that's okay. But if but, you find one person, I need to meet that person. Yes, it's probably somebody online right now who's gonna be like, I can't stand her. <laughs> um, you not gotta read now, right? <laughs> yeah, right. But there there are people who I don't necessarily like. I try not to do business with anyone I don't respect because I think that there could be a difference of style, there could be differences of opinion, but we can still respect each other. And I think as long as people can treat each other with respect, then we can work together. I always wondered about that, and I, and I think we had this conversation before. I don't like working with people I, I don't like because I'm, I got a big disdain from them. You know, it's like I, I know cringe. that you. I know that that is one of your your struggles. But in in the hierarchy of mm-hmm. life, you, there are times where you there's a gatekeeper who is somebody you don't like, and they don't like you. They may even discriminate against you. But happens you, all the time. But you have to get past that you have to get past that door. Um, and so you, you learn to navigate those people because mm-hmm. it's not so much that you're dealing with them as it is you're navigating. Okay, because I learned to, like, in my early days, I was like, oh, I'm not talking to that person. Mm-hmm. If I don't like somebody, I'll still hold a conversation with them. I'll still talk to them. I'll still, you know, I even still try to help them out. I would never be disrespectful. What do you base the like on, though? Like, I'm... I'm they got I'm some a... shady stuff to me or talked about me and stuff like that or whatever. But I, my thing is... People are going to talk. Like, that's, that's yeah, a good thing. Yeah, but don't come to me asking for help. You know, but here's the thing. I do You're it, so above that. I, I'm about to say that. I like have, I can't I have even learned to say... Because... Entertain any of that. Like, my brain, I can't even wrap it around that. Well, I have learned to, like, just accept it, like, Oh, this guy was, or oh, this girl said whatever stuff. I just learned automatically. It's like it's not that serious. It's not that serious. And then it's only as important right, as you make it. Exactly. And also, it's not important. You got to think how they feel when they have to come to me, mm-hmm. and they know they don't like me or whatever, or they've been talking about me. But yet, you got to come to me and ask me for help. I think that whole like don't like is overrated. Okay. It is. They disdain you. And it, it, it's overrated, and I also think it's a big source of distraction. Mm-hmm. And when you are focused, and when you are, you know, f- on a track to go somewhere, mm-hmm. you, don't, you don't have time to worry about who likes you and who doesn't like you, because it doesn't matter. And in the scheme of things, it doesn't matter. Think well, about it. Does it matter? It not to me, because I'm, I'm, the train is still moving. It doesn't matter. To, to me and stuff, I could you say... You don't like me, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter Well, for me. me, I'm lucky enough yeah. to work with people who have the same vision I have is to take stuff to the next level. Mm-hmm. It's like, I would have never thought me and KP from Lycan Media would be as cool as we are because he's a perfectionist. His work is amazing. He's like Puffy. He'll take it from 100% to 200%. I've seen his work. Yes, he, he is, is amazing. He is really, really and talented. I, I would never knew... Like, when I first met her, I said, okay, we're not going to get along. Yeah. You know, 
but from the first day that Why did we, you think you wouldn't get along? Like, I don't what? I don't know. I just had that feeling and when we I did, never worry about that. I, I mean, you know, it's like when you first I met never worry. Well, the, Maybe there's something wrong with me. Well, it, yeah, pretty much. But um <laughs> Was that, I never worried well, about we that. We really, first time we really talked was that summer stage mm -hmm. for Ladies of Sky. And we talked, and the way we moved and working together and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and I was like, you know, he's not such a bad guy. And when I got to talk to him, and I learned so much from him, I was like, this dude is a beast. Yeah. You know, with everything. He don't do like, okay, I'm coming out here to do it. No, he was. He takes it to the next level. He's like, got his audio guy. He got one and two, two or three cameras. If if a cameraman's not there, his wife want to do it and stuff. I'm going to tell you something you don't want to hear. Oh, Lord. Let me finish my story. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> when I see his work, yeah. he makes me step up my game with my work. Okay. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh. Like, you know, that's why when I take pictures, I'm like, I got to be on point. Because I don't want him to say, oh, you know, I don't know. You know, but because he will tell me. Mm -hmm. He will tell me, Ugh, I don't know, but uh, yeah, but. I love his work, actually. His work is, he's really a beast. Good. I've seen some of his videos. The barbershop thing that he did, that video that he cut for the barbershop, remember that? The one for me? Yeah. Yes, that was. That was really good. Yes, I love that one and stuff. And I love that whole show. I, I, I love that whole concept. I would love to do that again. But, yeah. But, you know, it's like, he. It's a great he concept. Did, and, and we didn't even use the mics. He used the boom. No, the boom. Did we? Yeah, I think we used the boom mic and stuff. But the way he filmed it, mm -hmm. and I love it, the one thing about him, he films it, but he listens to everything. And then he, he'll he find other clips from everything else and put that in there. That's what a good and editor does, yes, though. He's a beast. I mean, I haven't seen yeah. nobody like that. I mean, as long as I've been here, yeah. been working in the industry or whatever, yeah. I've never seen somebody that really listened to it. He'll go down there. And the crazy thing, he'll be like, all right, I'm sending you the rough draft. It'll be the next day. Like, seriously? Yeah. Like, but that's also the difference between somebody who loves what they do. Mm -hmm. I think when, you have, when you're working with people who love what they do, it's like a force, mm -hmm. you know? And, and then also, you got to understand when you're working with people, oh, everybody got ideas and stuff. Because yeah, yeah. with us, like we did uh, the Unsung thing uh, in Jersey, and it was like, we never been to the place, so now we got to go off the fly. So I'm sitting there like I'm thinking about this or whatever. So I'm throwing ideas off of him. He's throwing ideas off of me. It's not, not like, no, we're going to do this. It's more like, what do you think? What do you think? Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm saying, are you filming? What do you think? I just know how to ask the questions. Right. You know, I'm just, I'm just taking pictures and asking questions. You're filming. What do you think? Where do you need me at? Mm -hmm. Or whatever, because, you know, and somebody like that, I can work with no problem. No problem. You know, and... I put him in the same category. He's not afraid to tell me I'm messing up. You know, it hurts. You know, it hurts. But I got to listen to it, you know. He's a great, he's good, good at what he does. I could work with him. Now, what you had to say? I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. <laughs> I, I was just going to say that the idea of whether people like you or not, okay. not is, is um, it's really a reflection of how you see yourself. Okay, here we go. Let me tell you one thing. And so, <laughs> and so I am just saying that I really feel like, for me personally, mm -hmm. I mean, and this, this is how I manage that stuff. I feel like I get up every day and I do the very best that I can do for everyone around me. Okay. Right? For the team, for my family, for everyone involved in my life, for my customers, for mm -hmm. my clients. Um, and so because I feel like I do my very, very best, okay. nothing else to me sort of matters because I feel like I, I did everything I could do because I start every day with giving 100% to the people that I'm responsible for. So... If somebody in that group or outside of that group doesn't like me, it doesn't matter. Well, hold on. So I, if you do your best, don't worry. I always doesn't try to matter. do my best. But, doesn't matter. But I, I think it's a misconception what you're saying here about, you know, and, and this is your, your, your point is very valid. You know, let me get that out. We're about to have an on-air argument. Yeah, no, here we go. <laughs> this is what goes on with us. Uh -huh. Your point is very valid, but... I don't look at myself uh, as, because you said it's a reflection on me. And I'm going to have to. It's a reflection of how you see yourself. Right. Because the fact that you give it any type of attention mm -hmm. or 
even a split second of your thought process mm -hmm. is because there's some part of you that is concerned and cares about that. I think everybody's like that. No. Okay. No. Hello, are you guys like that? Camera's here. Oh, are you guys like that? No. So, <laughs> no. Uh, is anybody chiming in? Is, are you guys like that? Oh, Lord, here we go. We'll find out in a minute because I'm sure yeah. somebody's going to say something. But when, when, I, when I say that, it's in the aspect of um, do I look at myself in a different way. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go with that. It's not a fact that I look at myself in a negative aspect or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I just I always try to I put myself at a higher standard. And if I don't reach that standard, even though I'm doing the best I can every day, I look at it as like, okay, you failed do better the next day. And that's how I have to look at it. Itself. But sometimes I get in my head. Mm -hmm. I do get in my head and everything. And I, I, I admit I'm one of my worst critics. I admit that. 100%. Yeah. I'm very bad on that. And I take it too far sometimes. But at the same time... What are you doing about that? Do better the next day. No, but what are you doing to, to change the fact that you're so hard on yourself? I kind of, kind of, it kind of pushes me to do better. So you get a benefit out of it, so you continue doing it. Yeah, because if I do something like hypothetical, not hypothetical, Sunday night, I did the photography or whatever. So I'm looking at the pictures. I took like over 500 pictures. So I'm, I'm editing them. I'm editing them. Are you going to edit all those photos? No, I took, you know, you always, an uh, outstanding photographer, Joe Conzo, he's like hip hop's number one photographer he's in that was that the Afri natural african museum whatever there's a section of him donated to i mean not donated but dedicated to him yeah he started with hip-hop with graffiti artists oh. all that stuff he started from then he's a farmer you know and he beat cancer shout out to joe he posts that did everywhere. you say he's a farmer fireman oh okay sorry i think he's retired now but he's just always been there and one thing he told me when i first started photography you know i started just out the blue and i was at katona park at the tool awards and he was taking pictures, and I was, I had, he has this magnificent camera, and I had like a T5i, you know, and I'm taking pictures. He said, what are you doing? I was like, I'm taking pictures. He said, let me see what you got. He's like, okay, you got the eye. Mm -hmm. Then he turns around and says, um, let me tell you something. Whenever you take pictures, take more than one. And I was like, what are you talking about? He said, trust me take more than one of mm -hmm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I never understood, it took me a little time to get it, a few months to get it and stuff, and then, cause I, I take pictures, I take it back, I said, damn, that would have been a good shot, that would have yeah. been a good shot. But I learned that if you take at least two or three of the same thing, one of them's gonna be right. Yeah. You know, and I didn't know that. So I saw him maybe a year and a half later, and he remembered me. And you thanked him, and huh? I, No, I took pictures of him, I was like, click, Aww. and then he was like, I said, hold on, hold on, click, and he just bust out laughing, he's like, you remember. Yeah. I didn't think he remembered who I was. But he said, you remember. That's cool. You know, so it's stuff like that, you know. Yeah. I, you know, I, I can go through the day. Like, I'm doing this show. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to beat myself up on it. Why? You know, because I know it could be better. You know, because I have to think about what I could have said. We're already going in with it could be better. Isn't this great? I thought it was great. No, it's great. But I wanted Tom Joyner great. Mm. You know. Everything, okay, I know you're not talking, because when you do stuff, yes, I'm calling you out now. When you do stuff, you always say, I could have did that better. No, I don't. Oh, my God. No, I don't. Stop it. Nope. I've heard you say that. Nope. Yes, you have. Nope. Yes, I you have. I will say I could have done that differently. It's the same thing. Nope. Different and better is not the same thing. Why would you do it different if it's not going to make it better? Because what happens is, when I say I could have done it differently means for that moment, I did my best. But looking at it, I could have done it differently. It's that doesn't, the, I'm saying it's the same not thing. the same thing. Nope, not yes, the same thing. Yes, it is. Thing. Nope. M. Not the same thing. M. Nope. I'm not letting you get this nope. one. Nope. <laughs> I'm not letting you get this one. <laughs> well, well, we'll agree to disagree. No, I'm right, <laughs> period. All right, I'll let you be right then. You're going to make me bring your mother up here because I know <laughs> you do that. Okay. All right. You're making me mad now. <laughs> what you getting mad for? Because you know you do that. I love you a long time. You don't have to get mad. <laughs> but anyway, so I wanted to tell yeah. you what, what happened. How are you going to segue what, out this conversation? What, what happened to me. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because you have all this paper there. Yeah, so 
I just wanted to share this because every time I learn something, I just want to share it. Right. So I wanted to, um, I was looking into booking uh, major acts. For Music acts. Th- yes. Okay. For the theater. Mm-hmm. And so I started pricing different people. Oh, that's and you know, be interesting. And you know me, I start at the top. Of and course. then I work my way down, right? <laughs> so... Um, so do you know, and I can tell you the price that I found out of what it costs to book these artists. Oh, I got the, I got the Bible. Right? So Adele. Hold on. I can tell you. I can tell you. How much do you think it is to book Adele? How many hours? Uh, so she's just doing a show, like. A full show? Uh, I don't even know if this is a full show. I don't think it's a full show. Okay. And she's going to do at least four songs. Adele. She's going to be close to 500 down. 750. Yep. Adele costs 750. And that's minor. How much do you think Lady Gaga is? Close to a mil. 750. Still? 750. Okay. Justin Timberlake. Mill. No. Justin Timberlake now? Mhm. He's not a mill, but he got to be He's over 500 down. I know that for a fact. I'm going to say 900 to a mil. To book Justin Timberlake right now is $1 million. Yep. See up. So. So I want to hear, hear this ending story right here. That was the end. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought you yeah. said you, I thought you like, could say you were going to book him. Yeah, the- no. Like, <laughs> like, I was like, what? What? But I see now why tickets are so expensive. Yes. They got to make their money. But I also have issue with that because I feel like some of these shows of, are just like the sporting events mm-hmm. are out of reach for low income people. Right. And middle class. Yeah. And some middle class. Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm just talking to some people about how do we make this stuff more accessible for low income people, children, especially kids who, who admire these people and will never get to see them live because mm-hmm. they can't afford $350 for a ticket. For a ticket in the rafters. Or $1,000. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, I, so I started to look into it, mm-hmm. and I found out why. And so now I know that why? because it cost a million dollars to book why? these people, um, because that's, that's what the market can bear. And okay. as long as the market can bear that, mm-hmm. That's what it's going to cost. Okay. So I'm just trying to figure out. You so that's my new pet project. Okay. Cool. Now, when, you, when, when you're booking these shows or whatever and stuff, a lot of those prices are if they come in with a band. Mm-hmm. Like if Justin Timberlake's coming with a band, that price is about right. Now, if he's coming by himself, it'll go down because you have to pay those band members. It's travel with instruments and all that stuff. He want to be flown first class, this and that. Prime example, when, um, when I lived in Vegas and I was involved in a New Year's Eve show mm-hmm. at the Venetian, mm-hmm. we had to pay Jamie Foxx and Fantasia, right? They wanted some. She's 350 Not then. Not right when now, I, she's 300 Not when I was living in Vegas. She, she was close to a mil at that time because she was the hottest thing at that time, you know, but... When it, when it comes down to it and stuff, it just went to a situation where um, people, like, they'll book and say, okay, this is their full price. So that would handle travel, hotel, this and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of these acts, they're straight out like, no, you got to, um, you know, I, I charge a million or 750000 I want six rooms at the Waldorf Astoria. Mm-hmm. You know, I want transportation here and back. I want this certain type of food oh, or whatever. So you have to deal with all that stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, even with my brother, with him traveling all over the yeah. world and stuff, he doesn't go hard. You know, he, got, he works with one of the top groups in hip hop, you know, MOP. And just to be in there with them and you, you'll be shocked with the stuff that they want because it's like, a lot of them are like, oh, I want this. I want this bag of weed and stuff like that. But when you go... It happens. But when you go in their dressing room, they want healthy stuff, which is amazing. I was like, yo, where's the watermelon? Where's, where's the chicken? Yeah. Because they got healthy. These, all of these things, I think that's sort of like my mission in life. All of these things should be accessible to everyone. Should be, but. And we should all be able 
to go. To enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they need to have, you know, different tier pricing or or whatever. Um, But yeah, so that's my new it's my new thing. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. This is so, going to be so interesting. So we, will, we will see. And it, you know, and it could be that maybe we set up some type of foundation and they come through the foundation. I don't know. I don't know. Or but, knock out the other two other uh, people that's in the other one and just make the theater bigger. Yeah. But even if, but even if we do, I don't want the prices to be so high that people, you know. Well, if you're going to have it at your place now, prices got to be extremely high. But also, it's like for something like that, just say Justin Timberlake would be the ideal place person for you. You know, because one, he's going to be in a crowd. Yeah. I would do it outside. Yeah. I would build a stage in that. Well, you can't block the alley. But I would build a stage in that alley. You got the barge right there and stuff like that. Or I can put it in that new place I'm thinking about. Mm. Okay. Well, then there's that. Then there's that. Yeah. But, you know. Which uh, now has come to a halt with everything that's happening. What do you say? Talk it into uh, fruition. Yeah. You know, so. It's going to happen. I just don't know when. <laughs> you always say that to me and stuff. Like, uh, and then it happens. Yeah. But, but it, it, it takes time and I have to be patient. But that's true with any business deal. Like. Okay. You are thing. never patient. Really? Never. I thought I was patient. No? Is, is she patient, Mom? My mom is laughing over there. She's like, no, she's not patient. Now, you've never been patient. You've just been hit the ground running. But at the same time, it's like hitting the ground running, and it always works out because it's like, oh, no, you're going to talk to me whether you want to or not. <laughs> We're doing business. And I noticed that with you. It's like, because you tell me, like, call him. Like, I can't call him. I'm not that guy. You know, just call him. So what? You know, call him. I'm like, Ugh. Like when you tell me, tell me to call Julian. You know, like, call him. Just call him. What I was like, oh, my God, he has a great show he's pitching I know. around. Yes. The one with the, with the politicians. Did you see that? I saw one. It was, on, it, was on, um, it was on MSG. Really? Yes. It was him. It was a basketball player and, a, I think, a politician and stuff. And I think they change up sometimes. Yeah. yeah he got pretty, it on MSG? Yeah, I think <gasps> so. But, he was pitching it. I, yay. I have to call him. Let me write a note. I have to call him. That is so cool. I thought that was going to be like a great, you know, when you see a show and you're like that, that's going to be a hit. Yeah, it, it's, it was really good. I was trying to I was trying to reach out to him and see if I could get on there as a as a producer, but I just never got around to it. And here's the messed up thing. I'm Seminar. so mad at him because those wings <gasps> in this place are oh my so gosh. good. I was so that was mad. like my favorite escape. And I only got a chance to go once. <gasps> Those wings. I actually, I think one time I I posted about the wings, and I think I put that they were jerk wings. Yeah. And he said they weren't. They were, I don't know if I, Hmm. I forget what, but but I misnamed the the wings. I thought they were jerk. I don't remember what happened, but I know that he wrote me (laughs) and said... The wings are X, Y, Z, not. Uh, and I was like, okay, I respect the wings. I got it. I got to get the right. The wings were off the hook. Oh. And that was the time you was on me about, call him, call him. I call said, no, him. I'm going to go by there. Yeah. I'm going to go but by there. But I think there. we did get to call him. And yeah, finally. We, and, and he said he was willing to do it. Mm-hmm. But and then, then everything. Yeah. yeah. A lot of stuff happened and whatever yeah. and stuff. So. And he went, his, his restaurant, he closed it. Yeah, he closed it. And now he's just doing catering. Yeah, we got to get those wings say, catered yeah. maybe for October Film Festival this year. Oh, yeah. To have him cater the wings. On the opening night? Yeah, or for the award show. The opening night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. We're like whispering, like I know, it's a right? secret. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we're the like, wings. We're in the yeah. office now. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those wings were so... His mac that. and cheese yeah. was amazing. And that's and what the, I had. And he had like fries, and I don't know what he put on those fries, but they were like. I didn't have the fries. I had the mac and cheese and the wings. <sighs> it was so good. That was like my escape. And the drinks were good. They were strong. So I would have a drink, wings, escape. Sure. And then he had live jazz music because his wife can sing. Yeah, she, All that woman can sing. Yes. So I can listen to jazz, have a drink, have great wings. I was so sad that that business so closed. Close. That was, was going to be my spot. And I really thought he was going to make it. But that's just a testament to how hard it is to stay open yeah. when you have a storefront. And you got major people coming in there. That just to Major. Eat. You seen that wall? Major people. I'm like, oh. 
Every time I was there, there was a celebrity. Yeah, I think I, I, I. But it wasn't over, enough. It's it's so. But they hard. raised the rent on him and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's hard. But he's he's a beast. Definitely. Yeah. He shouldn't yeah. be doing TV. I think he that's going to be like the next move. I think I have to actually own the building wherever I s- set up because that the raise the rent thing is always a problem when you have a commercial space. So you heard it here first. Yeah. So we'll see. Okay. So you're see doing that happens. this summer? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I'm just saying like that would be the next logical. Mm-hmm. How do you come up, you know? Like when you, you get asked to speak at a lot of things. Mm-hmm. How do you come up with your topic and stuff? Because I know a few times I was like, so what you going to talk about? You're like, I don't know. Yeah. And then you just go right into it and stuff. How do, how do you know which way you're going to go? Like when you see the crowd or something like that or whatever? So a lot of times it's, it's whoever's putting the event together mm-hmm. will say, you know, I usually ask about the audience. Are they young? What are they into? What are they mm-hmm. interested in? What are the, some of the struggles that you see? Uh, and that's how I decide, usually. Yeah, because you gave a tremendous speech at the NC, NAACP uh, out in Central Iceland. And you had those women like, Whoa. That was one of my favorite. Although I like speaking at the boys and girls. Uh, I'll give her said, I think that was your, you know, I'm going to have to go with that one. That, no, I'm saying in terms of like what was my favorite. I mean, I love talking to kids. I have a heart yeah, for Yeah, that's the what kids. I'm saying. That has to be your so, favorite. So to be able to talk to those kids at that high school mm-hmm. was, was huge. But the NAACP allowed me <sighs> I to... I just realized which one I heard. I, I heard a speech. I was like, I thought you were talking about the Boys and Girls Club. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. no. Okay, I the know what you're talking school. about. You did the but wheelie thing. Yes. 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 Shout out to Natalie. Dr. Natalie. Yes, she, yes. She put on a great event. And I missed her TEDx. TEDx was really good. There's a yes, lot of... Yes, yes. Ladies, have y'all ever heard of Purple Bottom Shoes? No. I have to look that up, you yeah, were saying. E2. I got to send you the information to his website. So now they're not red bottoms. Now they're purple. Purple. I'm still wearing black. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even got a color. <laughs> But he, he makes them for men and women. I'm going to look And he had up. these. Purple bottom. I have to look those up. Right. The shoes. I'm, I'll make sure you get his name. But yeah. the shoes. He had some on display at the TEDx. Okay. And I was looking at him. And I, I was, was like, like, how do you tie him into the TEDx? But I see now. No, he sp- his speech. He started off. I'll never forget. Because I was taking pictures of him. Mm-hmm. I ended up staying the whole speech. Because it yeah. was just off the hook. He started off. He would relate to women. He would know what a woman's about by her shoes, on what level of shoes, what kind of woman she was by what level of shoes she wore. If she wore heels, businesswoman, strong, this and that. If she wore, uh, you know, sneakers all the time, practical, busy. She had probably got kids. She's always hustling, you know, trying to get stuff done or whatever. He didn't say nothing negative about it, but each, each pair of shoes that he talked That's about. That's making me think about what kind of shoes I wear. <laughs> You do wear those. <laughs> I wear, yeah, I wear boots. Yes, I'm a boot. Girl. I'm gonna ask him that. That's interesting because he did talk about, he did talk about each shoe. Didn't they record it? Yes, it's coming. Okay, good. But he did. I want to watch it. He did talk about each shoe, and it was. She should monetize that, by the way. That's something you gotta talk to about. I don't know. Okay. I don't know how to go about that because I don't think you can do that with TEDx. Really? I don't think you can. You can't make no money. Really? Yeah. Huh? Everybody who spoke. Did it on their own dime. That's how big TEDx is. Hmm. Yes, because the that's TED Talks is in Canada. And that's when the heavy, heavy hitters come. But she got... So I wasn't going to get paid? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> kind of glad I was busy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I can't with you. But the people that she did get to speak, yeah, you know, they came on their own dime or whatever mm-hmm. stuff, but... Every single one, there was a couple, and they played off each other and did the speech or whatever and stuff. It was off the hook. <laughs> I can't with you. How you gonna write notes on my show? <laughs> <laughs> really? I don't even know what that says. You don't even know what it says. I, ha- I have bad handwriting, but go ahead. Um. Okay. Anyway, but every single speaker mm-hmm. had so much to um um has so much to say in the way they said it you know and for them to travel from out of new york or whatever and stuff it was crazy right it was really crazy and stuff so um 
so when they when the people talked about it and they talked about each thing, everybody had some different, but the theme of the whole thing was paradox. Mm. You know, I had to look up paradox and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, because I thought that was a movie. I mean, it is a movie though, but still. So I had to look it up, and I was like, okay. So I had to see how mm. how they yeah. flipped every single one. So yeah. every speaker was just off the hook. I'm sure. You know, off the hook. I'm sure. Natalie has a good eye for that too. Yes, and she her, has that, that her and vision. her team and stuff like they yeah. picked them, and I didn't even know who the people were. It's like when she mm -hmm. showed it, she was like, "Oh, it's a few people from wine, a couple people from wine dance or whatever mm -hmm. and stuff." And I was like, "Who?" And when she showed it to me, one I'll tell you about later, mm -hmm. but another one, but both of them spoke mm -hmm. so well on, on, it was about them or about what they wanted to talk about, but they made that speech theirs. And that's what I liked about everybody who spoke. Everything, everybody who spoke, they made it theirs. And it, it was just off the hook. I, I mean, I went to TEDx the first mm. time in Farmingdale, TEDx Farmingdale, and I was like, I've never experienced this. That I knew about cool. TED Talks, but um, you know, so it's so almost time for us to go. So yes. what's going on with the cafe now? What? Okay. <laughs> Clearly I read this wrong. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> I thought I said quarantine. <laughs> quarantine? What are you talking about? You got bad handwriting. I do. I have horrible <laughs> handwriting. Everything's right. in my head. Okay. So we're going. if anybody got any questions, please either type on the website or... A lot of people looking on live and stuff. As you yeah. see, they've been chatting the whole time or whatever. Yes. But if anybody I, has any questions, you know, let us know. And if not, we're going to continue talking because that's what she's best at. <laughs> right? I don't know how to take that. Well, you know, you can, you can talk to a balloon in a, in a storm. I'm just saying. Never heard that saying. And that's mine. Don't steal it. <laughs> okay. The thing is, I haven't checked the website to see if people ask questions because people um, are hitting me up and saying so much. I was checking it, and then my 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 computer died. Don't you got it plugged up? No. Why didn't you plug it up? I intended to, and then I got distracted. So it's okay. I can't with you. It's all right. I cannot with you. You are something else. Okay. Well, people saying keep rocking and whatever and stuff all like right, that. All right. Cool. So, so um. All right. So, real quick and stuff, because we got like 12 minutes. All right. So, the one thing that a lot of people don't know about you is how did you, what made you decide, and what was the pro, okay, I got it. So, I had to think about it right there. Yeah. I had like four questions right there. What was the process of you opening a theater? Oh, my goodness. You got 12 minutes. The process. Yes, yeah, the process. To the point where, because I remember when you thought like about it. Like when I thought about doing it? I or, remember or that. Or how I actually got it done. How you actually got it done. Because you, you told that story on the, the NAACP thing. Yes. You know. So. It's a good story. I had, I had a film, The Turnaround. Shout out to James Hunter, who uh, wrote it and directed it. But I had a, a film that I loved. And it was my first faith-based film. And I was trying to get it into theaters and trying to get theatrical distribution for it and um, James probably doesn't know this but I was working very hard on it and uh, I couldn't get it James Hunter oh, okay. yeah I couldn't get it uh, into theaters and I took that very personal <laughs> and I thought like the reasons I was getting why it wasn't getting theatrical distribution mm -hmm. was very upsetting to me and basically I was being told that there wasn't really an audience for it right. um, Anyway, so I, I left there thinking, you know what, how, to how many filmmakers does this happen where you have a film that you love, that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that it is a film that people should watch, that people would want to watch, okay. but there's this entity or this person standing in your way, yes. deciding mm -hmm. that your film is not worthy. Preach. And <laughs> hallelujah. And so I just, I at that point I decided you know what I need to build my own movie theater and I said it jokingly but it registered in my head that that was the solution to the problem mm -hmm. and so originally I wanted to do the Sunshine Theater but it was way too much money um, and I wasn't going to be able to, cre to build it for the filmmakers I was going to have to charge a ton of money for them to screen their movies and right. that wasn't going to work mm -hmm. so then I just started looking around for spaces and um, a bunch of shows were shooting in the area where I saw that space. And I thought, well, this is a great space. And it was a blank canvas. It was being used for construction. There was trucks in there. And I thought... Oh, that's right, because it looked like yeah, a garage when we it went was, through there. Yeah, it was a construction site. 
and that's where they were parking all the trucks. Mm-hmm. And I thought I could convert this to a movie theater and I could get the cafe and I could do all this stuff. And it was just like the next best thing to do. And the thing that I'm working on now is also the next best thing. So people think I have like this five year plan. I don't have no five year plan. Five I day, have I have the <laughs> five day plan. I have, you know, what is the next best thing to do? And that's how I live. Like what's the next best thing to do? And then what do I have to do to make that happen? And mm-hmm. then I just take take action. Okay. And I work on it till it gets done, whatever it is. Exactly what it is. And we got a question. Sure. Okay. The question is uh, as a woman, which you are Yes. All right. And a woman of color is that? Yes. A black and Latina? Yes. All right. How important is you how important is it for you to keep your integrity? Oh my goodness. Very, very important. Extremely important. Because that's all you really have. Mm-hmm. Right? It's your experience, what you've done, and then your level of integrity. Well, how do you handle that? Because being a woman in the business, and that's a very good question, because I think I've asked you this before, mm-hmm. you know, just us sitting there chatting it up. But, you know, being a woman in the business, you know, you're smart. A lot of guys don't realize how smart you are until they talk to you. You'd be like, okay, that didn't work. But also, you know, a lot of guys try to step to you or whatever and stuff like that. But how do you handle that when they think, like, they need you? In fact, that, in the fact that, they think that you need them or they can help you do whatever and more and you're more like, well, you know what, thank you, but you know, I got this. How do you handle that with people being consistent like that or, or what, being a woman in the business? Because that's with any woman in any type of business. The, the being a woman in the business has been really, really difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, it just has been a major, major battle, right. but it hasn't been impossible. But it has it has added a layer of complication to everything. <laughs> um, but I will say that success, in whatever way, in whatever shape, however much of it, is the best best weapon. Because they cannot take your success from you. Okay. I said I was going to start a film festival. And I did it. True. And whether those people helped me or not, supported or not, I did it. True. I said I was going to produce film and TV. I did 19 of them. Mm-hmm. Whether people helped me or not. And whether was on, I was and, on, and was on TV. Right. And, you know, I wanted to build a movie theater with or without. I self-funded the theater, which means everything in there I paid for with my own money. Mm-hmm. So I have no loans. Yep. No debt no investors, mm-hmm. and no partners. Ooh. So I, I bet all my money on me. Okay. And I think sometimes women are afraid to do that. And that was what I spoke about at the NAACP Awards. Right. We are afraid, as women, to bet on ourselves. We will put money into clothes made by someone else. We will put money into all kinds of stuff made for someone else. We mm-hmm. will give our money to lots of people to parents, friends, whatever. But we won't take that money and invest in ourselves because sometimes we don't believe enough in ourselves Mm -hmm. to put all that money into ourselves. And sometimes you'll buy a house, right? You put all that money into the house. You don't really own it. True. Until it's paid for completely. Which can take some years. Right. And so, but we're willing to put money into that thing Mm -hmm. that isn't in the end going to give us what we want. Do you think that people who um, don't think that way, they hinder themselves from, because everybody, because like what you did, you put everything into it, you like. I liquidated everything. Like whatever happens, happens. But what if it didn't work? I never thought it wouldn't work. Okay, I got that. And, and that I never I, thought it wouldn't work. That I know about you. Right. I uh, never thought it, didn't, it wouldn't work. But if for whatever reason mm-hmm. it didn't work, I would shift into something that would work. Okay. So, so failure is, is, in, is in phases, right? And so even if... And, and because I, I thought about that, because, really? because all of my money. So you are is, human. 
I thought about that because all of my money is wrapped in this thing. Right. And so I thought, okay, so if the motion pictures doesn't work, mm -hmm. what else? And then I did events. If the events don't work, then what else? Then we added film festivals. If film festivals don't work, then what else? Then we have the cafe. If the cafe don't work out, what else do we have? Catering. If that doesn't work out, what else do we have? Church. If, we don't, if that doesn't work out, what else do we have? Right? How can church so, not work out? Things happen. So, so, and, then, and then there was community. Right. And so I need the filmmakers. I need the distributors. I need the production companies. I need the streaming services. I need the seniors. I need the kids. And so how do I take this thing that I built and and make it serve? Because that's where money comes from, is from serving. And so how do I get this thing to serve all these people? Okay. And so if you come to my house, you'll see a whiteboard. You'll never get to my bedroom. But if you, if you came to my bedroom, <laughs> there's this whiteboard, and there's this chart, <laughs> and all these lines, and I'm constantly erasing. And so I started with movie theater, and then I put a line going this way, and, and all the elements underneath that, and then I put more lines, and at the cafe, and more elements. And even today, right? <laughs> <laughs> Even today, there's more lines, right? Right. And, and so how do I now take this thing and move it to the next level? But all along, it's how do I serve people? How do I make something mm -hmm. that people need and can use? I hit the camera by mistake. Yep. I'm good? Okay. I definitely <laughs> understand that. And the time that And I why were you laughing? What's so funny? Because first thing you directed that towards me, like I was trying to get into your room. <laughs> no, oh no, oh no, never. I'm, said, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Ooh, gotta be I mean, careful. Yes. I was, I was like, okay. Totally inappropriate. Sorry. <laughs> that was like, I was like, dang. That just if, happens to be where I keep the whiteboard. I know, but that, what if I wanted to be like, ah, uh, you know what I'm saying? You dead in it. Uh, let, let's end this show. <laughs> let's end this. <laughs> no, but. I do understand on that, and that's one thing that you have taught me as, not, you know, to, to look at a bunch of things. Don't mm -hmm. streamline into one mm -hmm. thing. You need I, multiple sources right. of, of revenue, always. And I think from the time that I met you, I have branched out into other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, doing a show. You're doing, doing photography. Doing, for, for, uh, photography, videography. Yes. You know, yes. helping a lot of people who are doing their own radio shows yes. and everything. Yes. You know, even with working with legends, yes. which I love doing, but... You know, I end up being the stage manager, doing the yeah. security, yeah. watching them, how they and get And what are you doing through all that? You're serving. Oh, I thought I was learning. But you're serving. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I work with people and, and just seeing how they get their stuff together to mm -hmm. do, because you see their shows, mm -hmm. and I've been lucky to see people that do some great shows, but then be behind the scenes with them, and I'm sitting there like, how the heck are, you know, Christopher yeah. Williams, um, uh, who did I see one time just blew me away? Most deaf. How he gets ready for the show. He's just like, oh, you know, whatever. Come on, let's go. I'm like, <laughs> seriously? Yeah, yeah. Like, you got to pray or something? Like, he just mm -hmm. goes out and do it and stuff. But you have to have the love for it, you know, which will make, you know, you have the love for what you do, which will make, I know I got one minute, which will make everything that go, go correct. Okay, now real quick. This is Emily Stewart from Stewart Cinema and Cafe. And when this thing lifts up, this coronavirus lifts up, please go to stewartcinema.com. You know, and if you got an independent... You can come now and have great food with 10% discount. And kids get free popcorn. So you can definitely come. We're open 11 to 4. Okay. I was going to get to that. Yes, sir. I'm going to say some stuff that you didn't <laughs> say. Okay. Go to Stewart Cinema Cafe. If you got a project or whatever, you know, independent films, motion pictures, live music, filmmaking, editing suite, fashion events, comedians, spoken word, That's any right. type of event, I would suggest that you call her and start, start like, try, or email her. Trust me, email her. Don't call her. Email her. Call Carl. <laughs> no, that's even worse. Email Stuart Cinema. I mean, uh, Emily at Stuart Cinema Cafe. Emily at StuartCinema.com. Please start. If you have an idea or whatever, and you're thinking about booking it or whatever, this is the time to start talking to her. Yeah. You know, so you, so she knows who you are, mm -hmm. and so you know, because the ones that had to cancel or they rescheduled, they're going first. But you want to be prepared. Also. When this band lifts, I, well, that's why I want to ask you real quick. When this band lifts, you do the catering. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are you still doing the catering now? Yep. You, okay, make sure y'all go to StuartCinema.com. Find out all this. Catering for movie sets. Right. So you'll find out all this information, catering, mm -hmm. 
uh, what's going on in the theater when the band left, what's like playing at the with the person. I thought it was 12. You can get as low as 10. Okay. First come, first serve. And with the economy the way it is. Yeah. I'm going to have to order me something. All right. Yep. I want to thank you for taking the time out and hanging yes, out with me. Yes, it was lots of fun. Yes. I hope people learned something. Yes. hope they got something out of it. Yeah, we got... Oh, they clapping. <laughs> <laughs> it bugs me out every time. Yeah. So we definitely come check us out next week. Uh, we, you know, we got a lot of surprises coming up at the end of the month. And hopefully y'all will like them. But we got to get out of here because my time is dead. So we'll see y'all next week. Yes. Goodbye. Bye-bye.